Hello everyone. I hope you all enjoyed learning the main text Honeydew. It is now time for us to move to our supplementary text It So Happened. Remember, when we mention of a supplementary reader, we mean it is a sort of supportive or extra reading material to the main text. And here, we are not going to read anything in detail like the main text. Instead, we are going to give it a skimmed reading. Shall we begin? If you are ready to begin with me, you need to have your textbooks in your hand so that we can read through the text together. As children, I am sure we all would have read or at least heard of the Panchatantra tales. What are these Panchatantra tales? Do you know some of the examples of these tales? To mention some to you, do you know the story of the monkey and the crocodile, the tortoise and the hare, and the fox and the crow. I want you to have a slight analysis of the titles we just discussed about. What is something common of all these titles? The three titles that I just narrated to you have something very common in them. If you can recognize, they all have animal names in it. And necessarily, the story talks about or talks through the animals, which means the animals are given certain human characteristics and if you get back to your main text the honeydew you will recall what personification is as we have dealt already with it in the poem Macavity. What are these sorts of tales called? These sorts of tales are termed as fables. Look at the definition of fable on your screen. Fables are a short tale which are not founded on facts and are narrated using animals, which is very essential and give us a moral lesson. Now that you have learnt about what a fable is, let us now go through the first unit of our supplementary reader. That is, how the camel got his hump. This is written by Rudyard Kipling. Who is Rudyard Kipling? Have you ever heard his name? I am sure you all would have. Look at Rudyard Kipling appearing on your screen. And he is very recognizable for you if I mention one particular book name that he has very popularly written. Yes, The Jungle Book was written by Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling was very popularly known for his art of children's literature. Like I already mentioned, all the fables are strongly imbibed with some moral lessons to us. And the current one that we are going to read also strongly professes one particular proverb. The proverb goes like this, hard work is the key to success. This particular lesson tells us that no job is ever menial. Any job that we do with utmost dedication and hard work put in will always fetch us fruits. That is, it will always make us succeed. Being idle bears no fruit to any one of us. As humans, we all need to give importance to working hard and gaining success through continuous learning. And this is what the current unit strongly professes to us. By now, you have an idea about what we are going to deal with in this unit. But you also would be curious to know how the camel who got his hump is connected to hard work. To know more about this, we should go through the text. And while I read through the text, you should open your books and go through the lines. How the camel got his hump. In the beginning, when the world was new and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. He ate sticks and thorns and prickles and when anybody spoke to him, he said hump, just hump and no more. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and said, Camel, O oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Hump, said the camel, and the horse went away 
and told the man. Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Hum, said the camel. And the dog went away and told the man. Presently, the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, O oh three, I am very sorry for you. But that hump thing in the desert can't work. Or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry and they held a panchayat on the edge of the desert. And the camel came chewing cud and laughed at them. Then he said, hump and went away again. Presently, there came along the jinn, who was in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there is a thing in the middle of your desert with a long neck and long legs and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Phew, said the jinn whistling. That's my camel. What does he say about it? He says hump, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll hump him if you will kindly wait a minute. The jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a walk across the desert and found the camel looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My friend, said the jinn, what's this I hear of your doing no work? The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You have given the three extra work since Monday morning all on account of your idleness, said the jinn. And he went on thinking with his chin in his hand. Humph, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. I want you to work. And the camel said, humph, again. But no sooner had he said it, then he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big hump. Do you see that? said the jinn. That's your very own hump that you have brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday and you have done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you're going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this hump on my back? That has a purpose, said the jinn. All because you missed those three days, you will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hump. And don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the tree and behave. And the camel went away to join the tree. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave. Rudyard Kipling Now that we have learned the story of it through reading it completely, let us now go to the analyzing part to know the essence of the text. As you are already aware, the whole text is divided into two parts, that is part 1 and part 2. In the part 2, the writer tries to emphasize these four points as we analyze it. Look at those four points appearing on your screen. 
If you look at the first picture given to you in page 1, if you observe clearly, the camel does not have a hump. And eventually, when you go to page number 4, that is the part 2 of your lesson, you will see the camel having developed a hump. The text first tries to begin to tell us about how the world eventually evolved with men. If you mark the beginning of the text, the beginning of the text clearly tells us that it was a time when the man was just beginning to learn the art of domesticating animals. So here, the author tries to introduce us to various animals, that is the ox, the dog and the horse along with the camel. Here, the animals are given a certain characteristics. For example, while all the three animals work hard to make up for their work, the camel does not work at all. If you observe picture 1 given on page number 1 of a camel and a dog, you can see that the camel does not have a hump. But eventually, when you go to page number 4, that is the part 2 of the text, you will see that the camel has already gotten its hump. So the eventual story of how the camel gets its hump is the way the author has carried through the story along with the proverb of working hard for us. Coming to the third point of our analysis, the entire fable has been constructed from the point of view of a society in real. And when you consider the society in real in comparison with this fable, you can see that there is no amount of tolerance for the others when one person does not work. That is, when the camel is trying to shed all its work to the other three animals, the animals do not tolerate it. They go to the man and complain, saying that they do not want to take the burden of the camel and work extra hours. Whereas, the man who is only bothered about getting his work done, says that, I don't know, I cannot probably convince or tame the camel, so what you have to do is somehow finish the work for me by taking the extra amount of burden that is shed by the camel. So this is what happens in our real society. When someone does not work enough, they are not helped out by the others and are also isolated like the camel is isolated by the other three animals in the text. The fourth and the final point of analysis from part one is that when their problems weren't sorted out with the man, they went ahead to approach the higher authority who would be able to help them with this problem. And that was the jinn, who was the in charge of all the deserts. And the jinn promised to look into the matter and teach the camel a lesson. This is after which the jinn tries to go to the camel to have a conversation and then sort out the problem for the animals. Let us now go through the comprehension check questions from part 1 appearing on your screen. I leave questions 1 to 3 for you to refer to the video session that I have already done with this text and then write your answers yourself. Let us now discuss answer number 4. The question goes like this. How did the jinn know the horse was complaining against the camel? And the answer for this. While the other animals were assigned the camel's work due to his laziness, the horse complained against the camel to the jinn who was in charge of all the deserts. He described the camel saying, the animal which lived in the middle of the desert with a long neck and long legs had not done a stroke of work since the beginning of the week. This was a clear hint to the jinn that the horse is referring to the camel. Let us now look into the gist of part 2 of the text. In the beginning of the part 2, Jinn goes in search of the camel and finds him proudly looking at his reflection and the beautiful hump on his back. Here, you can see clearly how the camel is self-obsessed with its beauty and self-consciousness. So the camel, who has not worked for so long while the other animals were working, has developed a hump by eating and just sitting idle. And this is considered a beauty by the camel and he does not want to wear it off. This is one reason why probably he does not want to work at all. Look at the point 2. Here, the point 2 emphasizes about the way 
Jin tries to convince the camel. Camel, who's reluctant in working like the other animals, is being convinced by the Jin in a very tactful way. Neither the Jin goes and threatens the camel, nor does the Jin try to convince him. But what does the Jin do? Surprisingly, Jin tries to make him realize about the mistake that he has already been doing and gives him an option to survive with the mistake that has been committed and the price of the mistake that is already on the camel, that is the hump. Here, the Jin tries to tell camel that it is the only animal which has not worked for a long time as a result of which whatever it has consumed in these three days have not been utilized and have been stored in the hump. And that is why Jin says, now that you have to go and work with the other animals, you can utilize whatever has been stored in your hump for the next three days. In addition to this, the Jin also says that, now you cannot question me of how I was unfair to you. Because while you were not working, you have a solution of having dumped everything together and gathering it for the next usage. So, I have given you a reward even when you were not working and you are supposed to keep up your words for it, is what the Jinn tries to say. And when somebody tries to make you feel guilty of whatever you have done, you definitely try to change yourself and want to work better. That is what Jinn did to the camel. The third and the most important part of the entire text is the third point, where you get to see the reason for the camel's hump. Children, I'd like you to read the last three lines of the text. That is, let me read it for you. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And when this happens, you get to remember that time once lost is lost forever. And this is the proverb that has been professed in this particular line. So, you have to remember that once you lose time, it can never be made up and then try to replace by anything else. Time is that precious. Now, I hope you have got the complete gist of what the analysis of the text goes for the first unit. Let us now go through the comprehension check, which is there at the end of part 2. Here, question number 1, 2 and 4 are left for you to mull over and write down, whereas I will be discussing question number 3 and the answer for it. The question number 3 goes like this. What according to the jinn was the use of the hump? Answer. According to the Jinn, the camel missed his daily work for three continuous days. Hence, he said that the camel would be able to perform his tasks for three days without eating. The hump on his back would help him to store food and use the energy derived from it without eating food and working for a longer period of time. Students, the exercises at the back of your text has already been addressed to in this particular session. And I'd like you to solve all those questions by yourself with the help of referring to this video session. I hope you all had fun listening to the camel's tale and also understand the purpose behind the text prescribed to you. Before I wind up, here is something for you to think over and enjoy doing. I'm sure you all remember the bubble writing form that we learnt in the main text, Glimpses of the Past. I would want you to apply the same here in this story to form a bubble writing. So what do you do here? You write all the dialogues given here in a bubble and then make all the narrative lines in a box. And create the story, show it to your friends and family and enjoy the bubble writing technique. I hope this session was fun and a good additional reading. Thank you students. Bye.